Hello guys. I'm Rosh. And welcome back to Sinata Design. Today I will explain how Path Tracer works. I made this video tutorial based on a question asked by Viney Shivalkar. Now let's see where we can find the Path Tracer. There are two ways in which we can use Path Tracer. The first is through the interface settings. Here we can click on the renderer then the Path Tracer on off display will appear. Or we can go through the media, then create an image or in Twinmotion 2023 we can use a preset, then click the three dots below the image and a renderer appears. Both are the same. So here in the Twinmotion user interface, you may see that there is an icon, which is the path tracer. You can also press R on your keyboard to turn it on. When you press this option, as you can see, it starts to render the image. As you can see here, there is also this progress bar that tells you the length of basically the rendering time of that specific frame you are currently in. And as you can see here, when the progress bar reaches the end, we have a denoiser which is an AI tool that will just smooth all the pixels that you put on the screen. Okay, let's take an example of how to use a path tracer through the interface settings. Here we will use an example of a demo scene in Twinmotion. First we will discuss the sample per pixel. The samples per pixel is how many samples are in the rendered image. This is probably the most useful one. For example, if you set up a really small value, it will just calculate that image, that number of samples. In this video, I will make samples per pixel at 2 and press enter. It will calculate basically the image 2 times and it will stop the calculation. The more samples per pixel we use, the longer the rendering time will be, this is because Twinmotion will render as many values as we enter. For example, we use 52 samples per pixel, then Twinmotion will render 52 times. Enter the second. We'll discuss about max bounces. Here, the use of max bounce is how much light reflects off of surrounding objects such as mirrors, ceilings, floors and so on. So for example here if I set up just, let's say one bounce, as you can see here, I don't have a lot of lighting information, so the sun, when it comes in, it doesn't bounce on my ceiling. If I set up two bounces, I have the light comes in, it bounces on my floor and bounces back at my ceiling. The same thing happens, when you increase the settings for max bounces. The higher, the more light reflection that occurs. The thing that needs to be noted is, because max bounces are also influenced by the surrounding light either through lights or sunlight, so you need to make the right lighting settings. Next, the third. We will discuss denoiser. As I explained earlier, the denoiser functions as Twinmotion's AI to provide smooth rendering of the resulting image. For example here, when we turn off the denoiser, the image will appear a lot of noise. Next, we will discuss firefly brightness. Firefly brightness is useful for reducing distracting light reflections or exposures, but basically I very rarely get cases where I have to edit the firefly brightness. The next tool is Emissive. Emissive is useful for ambient lighting. This emissive function is used for objects that produce light such as lamps. Here we can see, when I try to turn off the emissive, the light will stay on, but does not contribute to global illumination. You can use this setting for outdoors during the day, 
where the sunlight is very strong but you still want to turn on the lights. However, for indoor, I still recommend activating this emissive setting. The last tool in the path tracer is aliasing filtering. The function of aliasing filtering is to determine how sharp or smooth the rendering results will be. Here I will try to zoom in to see the difference between the two rendered images. As you can see, in the left image, the aliasing filtering is set at a value of 1 and the image on the right at a value of 6. So to make the image sharper you only need to lower the aliasing filtering to a value of 1, and to make the image smoother, you only need to increase it aliasing filtering on a value of 6. Okay, that was an explanation of each of the tools in the path tracer. Now we continue to discuss the path tracer preset. To make preset settings for the path tracer, you can enter edit, then enter preferences. Or you can click on the menu located here and enter preferences. Another quick option, you can use Ctrl plus P. After that, you can select the path tracer. There, you can choose sample settings, from low settings to high settings. Usually I will only change the high setting. Here you can use 512 for samples per pixel and 25 for max bounces. Those are my preset settings. For more detailed settings, for each tool, you can make settings like the ones in this video. Okay guys, that was the tutorial using the path tracer on Twinmotion. If there are questions, you can comment in the comments column below. And don't forget to subscribe so I can develop even better in the future. See you in the next video. Ciao!